Okay, so now we have the setting. So we have we have a perfectly well defined weak form. We have the bilinear form and the linear functional to be both continuous and also the bilinear form is coercive. Now we can look at error estimation of how much does restricting the weak form to a finite dimensional space is going to cause an error in the solution. And there are two types of error estimates, a priori and a posteriori error estimates. They are different in the sense that uh, for a posteriori error estimate, so, so we always have a V and a VH. So, so, so uh, let's say U and UH, sorry. So U, U satisfy the weak form. U and V equal to L of V for all V in H1 or whatever infinite dimensional space. Okay, and the UH, before we say like UH can be represented as a, uh, as a linear combination of a finite number of bases, that's one thing, but another important thing is that UH is only going to satisfy the weak form for a less a, a subset of V's for all the VH in XH, where XH is a subset of the X. X is infinite dimensional, it's all the possible H1s, and XH, for example, in the piecewise linear and continuous representation, XH is this piecewise, is all the, collect, the collection of all these piecewise linear functions. Right, so where xh is a subset of x. For example, x is h1, xh is the collection of piecewise linear functions. Right, so, so uh is it's also the set of piecewise, it also belongs to the set of piecewise linear functions, but also it satisfies exactly the same weak form, but only for a subset of axes, for, for VHs only in this uh, subset of functions. Pardon? Piecewise linear, continuous, yeah. Right. Okay, so let's start to look at how do we bound the error. So there are two types of error estimates. So one type is a priori error estimate, is to estimate the difference between u and uh in a certain norm, usually in the norm of the function space x. Uh, estimated in terms of the properties of A, the properties of L, and the solution U. Okay, so because it's called a priori because we don't know U, we don't, we don't know what U is. So the error estimate is in some sense not computable. We can estimate it, but like uh, you can't really compute what the error estimate is because it involves this u, which is the exact solution of the weak form. A posteriori is better because it estimates this as in terms of a, l, and uh. And because UH is something we can compute, usually a posteriori error estimate is computable, right? So all the error estimates we did before, for example, in finite difference, which type does it belong to? 
let's say we did Taylor series analysis, we figured out the error in our finite difference approximation is something times delta x to the cube times the fourth order derivative of u. Right? What type of error estimate is that? Yes? A priori. A priori, yes. Why is that? Because, yes, because in Taylor series analysis, we're saying, okay, so the error is uh, fourth order derivative of u times delta x to the cube times something, right? Like 1 over whatever, 12. So let's say if the error term is like this, plus O delta x to the fourth, then it's a priori. Because of what? Because we actually involve the real solution u in the error estimate. A posteriori is a lot more difficult to derive, but it's a lot more useful also because we should be able to compute the error estimate not from the u but from the uh, the, the actual discrete solution. All right. So in this lecture, we'll start with the easier a priori error estimate, and uh, uh, if we have time, we'll go into a posteriori.